I put every NFL team on a map and by the end of this video only one team can be remaining. Teams will be picked randomly by a wheel spin, then I'll spin another wheel to determine whether they had north, south, east, or west. For example, if I landed on the Bears and they had to go east, they would be facing the Colts. If you lose, you're eliminated from the map and the winner will take all of your territory. And not only that, but they also get to steal a player. Let's head into our first wheel spin. Our first wheel spin is the Patriots heading south, which means they'll take on the New Jersey Giants. Jumping into this game, the New England Patriots start off with the ball and Mac Jones is delivering dimes down the field right now. Fun fact for you guys, Mac Jones stands for McCorkle, which is actually his middle name. If I had to know that, so do you guys. And look at Ramondre Stevenson with this powerful run. Mac Jones has nothing open. He's forced to take a sack and he fumbles. Kayvon Thibodeau with the recovery. That is huge for the New York Giants. This game was pretty back and forth so far. Both teams are scoring and they've kept it within one possession pretty much the entire game. And with two minutes left in the game, the New York Giants are down by one touchdown and they have the ball. They need to score right here, but Daniel Jones takes a sack. The Patriots pressure is really just getting to Daniel Jones. He's forced to throw this one away and literally every single play he's rolling out of the pocket and has nothing open. This O-line is really not doing him any justice right now. But on fourth and 16, Daniel Jones delivers a strike across the field to Sterling Shepard for the first down. That is massive for the Giants. Daniel Jones slinging it downfield to Darren Waller. What a pickup. Daniel Jones showing right now that he's worth that new contract the Giants gave him. And so is Saquon Barkley on this touchdown run as he's able to punch it in to tie up the game for the Giants. The Patriots need to answer back unless they want to go to overtime or lose the game and on the first play they pick up a first down. Mac Jones throwing the ball way downfield to Juju Smith-Schuster and it's incomplete. Mac Jones got away with one right there. I'm not even going to lie. That probably should have been intercepted. Mac Jones threw that ball. I thought it was open, but it ends up getting picked off by the Giants. I'm not even going to lie to you. He picked that ball off like through the receiver. That probably should have been a completion. And now the Giants have the ball with 24 seconds and a chance to win the game. They complete their first play for a gain of six. Daniel Jones throwing the ball way downfield and it's caught. This game is not looking good for the Patriots. Mac Jones has sold it away and Sterling Shepard coming up massive for the Giants. They just hand the ball off to Saquon Barkley and then they're able to get the field goal in to give them the win, winning by three. And that means that the Giants will take over the Patriots territory and they'll also steal Matthew Judon. Let's get into our second wheel spin of the day. Let's see what we have in store for us. It looks like we're going to have the Steelers heading west, which means that they're going to be playing against the Cleveland Browns. Kenny Pickett heading into his second NFL season, looking to improve and take over Cleveland. And so far, that is exactly what he's doing. AFC North matchups are always great games. And this is a slow defensive game, but it is competitive. But in the end, the Steelers are able to squeak it out. They're able to win by six, which means they're going to take over Cleveland's territory and steal none other than Miles Garrett. Going into game three on the day, we have the Saints going south and there's no team directly south to them. So the Texans are the closest and the Texans are pretty poverty, but I'm not going to lie. This game has been pretty competitive throughout and they've actually had a lead throughout a decent amount of this game. But with two minutes left in the game, the Saints are up three with the ball and they have a chance to end the game. If they keep it on the ground and waste the Texans timeouts, they can win this game. Alvin Kamara just got suplexed on this play. These new animations are pretty cool. And Derek Carter, Chris Olave over the middle of the field, he gets popped, but this game is over. The Saints are able to chew clock and that's what they do. They pull out, they win by three, stealing half of Texas, the other half owned by Dallas, and also stealing Laramie Tunsil. Heading into game four, we're spinning the wheel and it looks like we're going to have Justin Field and the Bears heading east, which means they play the Indianapolis Colts who are pretty bad. And when I said the Indianapolis Colts were pretty bad, I meant really bad. They went up 14-10 early and after that, they didn't score the rest of the game. Justin Fields and the Bears completely ran away with this one. They won 37-14. to That is insane. So the Chicago Bears now take over Indianapolis and they're stealing Jonathan Taylor from the Colts. Spinning the wheel again and it lands on Jimmy Garoppolo and the Raiders. They're going to end up heading east and play the division rival Denver Broncos. This should be a good one. And this was a good one. It looks like Russell Wilson is back to his Seattle form. He was tearing it up as the Broncos took a 10-0 lead early in the game. And honestly, they really kept that lead going throughout this entire thing. They pretty much had a two possession lead the entire game. And in the end, they were able to push away and win 31 to 21. The Broncos now own Vegas and they also have Devontae Adams. We are back with another wheel spin and it looks like the wheel is landing on Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings. And he is heading east, which means he's going into Green Bay to face off against Jordan Love. Very interesting to see what Jordan 
Jordan Love is able to do so far in his first season as a starter, and so far he is doing pretty good. This is a very competitive game both ways, and right now he's heading into the fourth quarter, two minutes to go, only down by one. And he has a chance to bring his team down the field and win it, and he is starting off by throwing a laser down the field to Christian Watson, who catches it and goes out of bounds, and now Jordan Love has nothing open, so he's evading the pocket, taking it, and running it for a massive gain, and he's able to stop the clock. Love is balling right now. He's taking what the defense is giving him. He's just checking the ball down right now. Coverage down the field is pretty good, and the Packers going for an insanely deep field goal and somehow make it. I have no idea how. And now the Vikings with a chance to come back and win the game. They only need a field goal, and they are marching down the field, but Kirk Cousins has to throw the ball away. This Green Bay pressure is really getting to Kirk. Let's see if he's able to beat the clutch allegations right now, and this is exactly what the Vikings needed. Kirk with a laser down the sideline to the new addition TJ Hawkinson. Kirk is actually coming through right now and they are trying to take a shot down the field. They don't convert but they do get the field goal up and it is good. The Vikings win by one point. They'll take over Green Bay and they'll also take Jair Alexander. We are going into game seven where it looks like the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be heading south which means we're going to be getting an AFC North matchup of the Steelers against the Ravens. Lamar Jackson finally has new weapons to throw to. He has Odell Beckham Jr. on his squad and you know that he's electric on his feet so it's going to be hard for the Steelers to stop them. And with just under two minutes to go the Ravens have the ball up by one point. If they get a first down it's pretty much game over. The Ravens are being smart. They're just keeping the ball on the ground right now. But they had to punt the ball. The Steelers get the ball with a minute 30 and one timeout left. Let's see what Kenny Kitten Mittens can do. Kenny Pickett's rolling outside of the pocket throwing the ball downfield and the Ravens intercept it. The Ravens are going to walk out of this snowy game with a dub. Kenny Kitten's mittens made a huge mistake and the Ravens take advantage. The Ravens now take all the Steelers territory and they're gonna snag Miles Garrett. We are getting into our eighth matchup of the day. Spinning the wheel this time looks like it's gonna land on the Seahawks and the Seahawks are gonna end up going south which means they're gonna be facing against the Niners. This is both teams first matchup of the day so far and it's looking like we're in for a good one. This game has been high scoring all the way through with a lot of big plays from each team. With the minute 38 left in the game, the Niners are up by seven points. If they get two first downs, the game is pretty much over. On first and 10, Christian McCaffrey runs forward for the first down. Another first and 10 for San Francisco, and they run the ball to Debo Samuel, who picks up the first down, but they are being weird with their clock management. I'm not sure what they're doing. It's like they're trying to rush, and now they're throwing the ball, and Brock Purdy throws the ball out of bounds, giving Geno Smith and the Seahawks a chance with 30 seconds left. On the first play, Geno tries to take a shot downfield. It's not successful and now he's looking for something he has nothing open he has to throw the ball away third and ten the Seahawks need a miracle and instead Geno Smith throws a pick the Seahawks are gonna go one and done as the Niners win a thriller San Fran now owns Seattle and they also own DK Metcalf we are back to spinning the wheel and this time it's gonna land on the Atlanta Falcons and it's looking like they're gonna end up going south which means they're gonna be facing off against the Carolina Panthers this is a poverty game this game ended up being about as poverty poverty as both of these teams are. It was pretty much just the Bijan show running through the Panthers the entire game. Bryce Young was just outmatched. The Falcons won a boring one, winning 20 to 6. They now take over Carolina, and they're gonna add Brian Burns to their roster. Hopefully we get a better matchup right here. We're spinning the wheel, and we land on the Commanders. And it looks like they're gonna head west, which means they're gonna play against the Ravens. Don't sleep on the Commanders this year. As I say not to sleep on the Commanders, Madden decides to do the exact opposite. They score one one touchdown to Terry McLaurin early in the game and after that it's all Ravens. Lamar killed them. Baltimore ends up winning 28 to 7. They're gonna take over DC and add a stud in Terry McLaurin. And our next matchup is gonna have the Cardinals, probably the worst team in the game, going north which means they're gonna play the Broncos. This game went just about how you would expect it to. The Broncos added Devontae Adams after they beat the Raiders so the Cardinals really stood no chance. Even without Devontae they wouldn't have but 41 to 13 is just ridiculous. The Broncos are expanding their land and they're gonna steal Buda Baker. Our next matchup of the day has the Titans going east which means they're gonna play the Atlanta Falcons. Basically Derrick Henry against Bijan Robinson. Just as you would expect Derrick Henry went crazy for the Titans and the Falcons weren't really able to get much going on offense. This was a pretty boring game which ended 24 to 14 giving the Titans a win. They take over Atlanta and Carolina and add Kyle Pitts to their roster. For the first time to Day, we have the Eagles and they're gonna go south which means they play the Rams
Ravens. These Ravens have Terry McLaurin, Miles Garrett, and more. And somehow, even with all these weapons, the Ravens stood no chance to the Eagles. The Eagles made the Super Bowl for a reason. Jalen Hurts is an absolute baller, and he led them to a dominating 38 to 17 victory. The Eagles take over a bunch of land and get Miles Garrett, who's just getting passed around at this point. We are on game 14, and this wheel spin looks like it's gonna land on the Chiefs. We're finally gonna be able to see Patrick Mahomes, and they're gonna be heading east, which means they play the Bears. We're heading into the game straight away because we need to see Patrick Mahomes, and the Bears pressure gets to him on the first play. Keep in mind, these Bears also have Jonathan Taylor. The Chiefs are on a third and 10. Mahomes slings the ball downfield to Kadarius Tony. First and 10, the Chiefs hand the ball to Pacheco, and he fumbles on the first carry of the day. Luckily, the Chiefs recover it, and Patrick Mahomes is able to take off and pick up the first down. And look what we have here, Mahomes to Tony yet again. This really just is the Mahomes Tony show at this point, but on this play he finds Richie James for the first down. These Chiefs are really moving the ball down the field. They're on second and three at the four yard line. And of course the Chiefs are able to capitalize. They get the first points of the game. Simulating through a little bit more, the Chiefs are able to just dominate the Bears, kind of what we expected. The Chiefs put up a 38 to 21 victory. They're gonna take Indianapolis and Chicago and they're gonna snag DJ Moore from the Bears. This time we have the Jaguars heading east, which means they're gonna play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. No team is directly east. They're the closest. The Jaguars took a 13 to zero lead early on in the game, but Baker Mayfield and the Bucks were able to come back and go up by one point. Jaguars have the ball down one with two minutes left and they're putting together a good drive. They're just keeping the ball in the ground with Travis Etienne because they know they're in field goal range. A field goal gives them a two point lead and they want to chew some clock. Etienne gets stuffed here on third and two, but they're able to connect on the field goal, giving them a two point lead. Baker and the Bucks have the ball, needing a field goal to win with a minute left and no timeouts. Baker finds Rashad White and the Bucks are actually driving. Russell Gage with a crucial drop on third and inches, but on this next play, he makes it up, picking up the first down. Baker's showing off his athleticism, rolling out of the pocket, throwing the ball to K. Dotton on the run. What a play. Madden has Baker at a 72. It's pretty disrespectful. And on this next play, he just misses his target. The Bucks have 20 seconds and no timeouts. Baker has to throw the ball away. This Jags team is starting to clamp. It's third and 10 and Baker just misses his target. This would have given the Bucks the win. Now they have to go for an insanely deep field goal. They can't connect. The Jaguars win by two. They're gonna steal Tristan Wirfs and they're one step closer to taking over Florida. For the second time in a row, the wheel is landing on the Jaguars. This time they're heading west. So they're facing another NFC South team. They're gonna be playing the Saints. And I think we all know that the Saints and honestly this entire NFC South team is not gonna be very good. They're not able to put too much points on the board and the Jaguars are able to take care of business pretty easily getting a 27 to 17 victory giving them a lot of new land and Marshawn Lattimore. We are staying in Florida as this wheel spin lands on the Dolphins and there's pretty much nowhere they could go besides Jacksonville and that is exactly where they go. This is the battle for all of Florida and it's a good one. Staying competitive throughout the entire game. Just under three minutes left to go. Game all tied at 21. Miami has the ball and they're running it with Devon A. Chain. This Dolphins team is the fastest team in Madden by far. Maybe ever and they find Tyree Kill for the first down. They just have so many playmakers but they finally get stopped. Jacksonville coming up with a massive stop. Holding Miami to three with the ball under two minutes left to go and a chance to win. They get sent to an early third and ten but they're able to find Travis Etienne on the screen to pick up the first down and give them a new set of down. Now the Jaguars are starting to drive the ball down the field. Trevor Lawrence is absolutely cooking this Dolphins defense. Connecting with Evan Ingram for a massive game. He finds Ingram once again in the red zone, giving them half the distance they need. And for the third play in a row, he finds Ingram. This time it's in the end zone to give them a lead. That could be the dagger. The Dolphins have the ball with 30 seconds left, all three timeouts. And on the first play, they find Tyreek. But they're gonna need a touchdown. Luckily though, they're already at midfield with 18 seconds left. But Jacksonville defense is standing strong. And on fourth and inches, the Jaguars defense comes through. They get a clutch stop. They're gonna win the game 24 to 28. They're gonna snag Tyreek Hill and take all of Florida. After we had three straight games of the Jaguars, we finally get a new team. We land on the Minnesota Vikings and they're going south, which means they play the Kansas City Chiefs. If the Chiefs win, they can add Justin Jefferson to their roster. That is insane. They've already added DJ Moore and primetime Kirk is just not showing up. The Chiefs are absolutely destroying the Vikings right now. They take a 38 to 20 victory, winning by 18, landing them Justin Jefferson. This is unfair and stealing all of Minnesota's territory.
story. Our next matchup has the Eagles with Miles Garrett going north, which means they play the Bills, so we're gonna see Josh Allen for the first time. This was a snowy day in Buffalo, and we were in for a great game. Very back and forth, not too high scoring, but we jump in with a minute 33 left, and the Bills have a chance to put the game away with a first down. They're just keeping the ball in the ground. It's smart. That's what they should do, and they pick up the first down with Damian Harris. That means they're gonna win the game 20 to 17, taking a bunch of land from Philly and stealing none other than Miles Garrett. We're getting to the point where all the teams are stacked and especially the team we land on right here, the Denver Broncos. They're going to be going north playing against the Niners. The Broncos added Devontae Adams and Buda Baker in this one and the Niners have DK and this game has been great so far. The Niners have the ball with two minutes to go. They need a touchdown to win it and on the first play, Brock Purdy throws a pick. Somehow he's able to bring it all the way back for the pick six, eliminating the Niners the second we hop in the game. What a play by Denver to give them a 31-19 victory. They're going to take Nick Bosa and take a ton of the West. We're going to have the Broncos playing again, and this time they're going to head West to play the Chargers. This Broncos team is completely stacked with Devontae Adams and Nick Bosa and Buda Baker, but this Chargers team has Justin Herbert, so you cannot count them out. The Broncos are up three with the ball. Two minutes left. They're running a screen to Javante Williams, and they almost pick up the first down, but they're going to have to punt the ball, and the Chargers are going to have a chance to win the game. And Justin Herbert is already off to a good start, picking up back-to-back -back first downs on the first two plays plays and then somehow the Broncos have a blown coverage. Joshua Palmer all the way down the field completely unguarded. The easiest game winning touchdown you'll ever see. The Chargers take over all the Broncos territory and they're going to pair the Bosa brothers together. We're going to get our first look at Aaron Rodgers on the Jets as he heads south into Buffalo. This should be a good one. And it was just that Aaron Rodgers and Josh Allen were going back and forth all day. This was an absolute thriller and with two minutes left in the game the Jets are down seven with the ball. Aaron Rodgers giving the ball to Brees Hall in the flats, but there's an unnecessary roughness penalty, which is going to tack on 15 more. Rodgers is really just checking the ball down right here, and he got away with one. That could have very easily been picked, and the Jets end up turning the ball over on downs, which means they need to get a defensive stop. A first down will end the game. The Bills are keeping it on the ground, and they get the first down. Aaron Rodgers goes one and done, and the Bills are going to steal Sauce Gardner and half of New Jersey. We're going to get back-to-back -back games with new teams as we get the Bengals going north. So they're going to head into Detroit to face the Lions. Our first look at Joe Burrow, and he is absolutely cooking. Madden has put no respect on the Lions. They're going to have one of the best offenses in football next season, but Electronic Arts is sleeping, I guess. As they get blown out, they put up 15 points. They didn't have anyone very good, so the Bengals are going to settle for picking up CJ Gardner-Johnson, and they're also going to take Detroit. We've got the Giants going east. There is no no team east to the Giants and the only possible outcome is that they play the Bills. So that's what's happening and it's showing this is a high scoring back and forth game. This is what we want to see but the Bills need a stop right here if they want to win the game and the Giants have Danny Dimes on a read option and he's going to pick up the first down for the Giants giving them the win. They're able to chew the clock down and they win by seven which means they get Josh Allen and all of Buffalo's territory and right away we're going to be able to get a look at Josh Allen on the Giants as he heads south into Tennessee. If the Giants lost this one, that would be insane. But luckily, EA has some logic, which is shocking, I know. But Josh Allen and the Giants just cooked Tennessee. They stood no chance. The Giants win by eight. They're gonna give Josh Allen a new weapon in DeAndre Hopkins and take so much more territory. This wheel is just glazing the Giants. We land on them for the third time in a row. They're gonna be going north into Cincinnati. This should be a great one. We got an elite quarterback matchup of Josh Allen against Joe Burrow and it went just as you would expect. Both of these teams were cooking. This was a back and forth game throughout the whole thing and a very high scoring one. And with just under two minutes to go, the Giants are trying to put this one away with Saquon Barkley. They're just pounding him down the Bengals throat and on fourth down they took a field goal to extend their lead to seven. Now Joe Burrow and the Bengals have a chance to tie the game with a touchdown and instead he throws a pick to Xavier McKinney on the first play. Burrow sells and the Giants extend their win streak and pick up Jamar Chase and the Bengals territory. We finally got a new team. The wheel lands on the Chiefs and they're going to be heading east. And never mind, the Giants are up for the fourth game in a row. But this should be the match of the day. The Giants are absolutely stacked and the Chiefs are well the Chiefs. But they also added Justin Jefferson to their roster when they beat the Vikings. We're nearing
nearing the end of the third quarter and I had to jump in to see if the Giants are going to be able to stop this game from being a comeback because the Chiefs are just blowing them out. This game's getting scrappy. Saquon Barkley dropped a pass on third and one and they had to punt the ball to the Chiefs. The Giants really need to get a stop right here, but there's really nothing you can do to stop Mahomes and they are struggling. But they finally get a sack and on third and 10, they swap the ball down. The Chiefs are going to have to punt the ball back, but there was really nothing the Giants could do to stop Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and Justin Jefferson. They lose this game by 11. The Chiefs are going to add Matthew Judon and take damn near half the map. For the first time in this video, we are seeing the Rams as they're going to head north, which means they're going to play against the Chargers. This is a battle for LA. And if you guys were unaware, the Rams are absolutely atrocious and these Chargers are stacked. The Rams actually kept the game closer than I would have expected them to, but in the end, it was the exact outcome I was expecting. The Chargers won 29 to 17. They're going to steal one of the greatest defensive players of all time, Aaron Donald, and take full control of the West. We are going to see the Chargers again, and in this matchup, they're going to head east to play the Cowboys who have yet to play. The Cowboys haven't played yet, so they're at a disadvantage because the Chargers have the Bosa brothers and Aaron Donald. So this team is absolutely ridiculous, yet the Cowboys still find a way to pull through and win 24 to 17, stealing the greatest defensive player of all time, Aaron Donald, and the entire west side of the map. We have three teams left, and this matchup is going to be the Cowboys against the Jaguars. Winner plays the Chiefs to take over the whole map. We're checking out the first drive of the game. Trevor Lawrence is handing the ball to ETN. They get a decent gain, and on second down, they're able to pick up the first down. They tried to run an end around to Christian Kirk. It got blown up, and on the next play, Trevor Lawrence throws an interception. That is not what you'd like to see. And the rest of the game went about how the first drive went for the Jaguars. Cowboys were in total control of this entire game. They're able to pull through and this is the closest they'll ever get to a Super Bowl. Winning by seven, they're going to steal Tyreek Hill and in contention for the last team standing. Our final matchup of the video is the Chiefs against the Cowboys. Winner takes all. Getting straight into it, the Chiefs get the ball first. They're looking to start off the game with a score and they check it down to Jarek McKinnon who does the rest. He picks up a massive gain. McKinnon was a Super Bowl hero for the Chiefs in real life and for the Cowboys Aaron Donald making big plays. This Cowboys defense coming up massive. Gilmore with the breakup which means the Cowboys have the ball. They're starting off with a run to Tony Pollard and the Cowboys are on an early third and one situation. CeeDee Lamb with the catch picks up the first down for the Cowboys. Now Dak Prescott's getting Tyreek Hill involved in the game, former Chief, and on second and three the Chiefs stuff Tony Pollard a yard short of the first down. But now Tony Pollard is breaking loose with a massive gain, a nice spin move, and a broken tackle. What a play by Pollard and this Cowboys offense. Now the Chiefs are coming up big. They sack Dak Prescott. In real life, Chris Jones is holding out and the Chiefs really need him. Cowboys looking to make something happen. Third and 14. Deep shot to the end zone. The Chiefs knock it down. Great play on defense by the second year corner. Tyreek almost had him. Simulating through the rest of the first quarter, the Cowboys were up for most of the game. They actually took a 23 to 7 lead at one point. Late in the third quarter, the Chiefs are down 10 with the ball. They need to get something going right here, and they're starting to get the ball moving, but DJ Moore drops it. And Justin Jefferson with a massive catch for the Chiefs. He celebrates by pointing the wrong way for the first down, but it's whatever. This Cowboys defense is playing pretty good. Patrick Mahomes throws it to Justin Jefferson at the first down marker. He gets absolutely popped, loses the ball, but the Chiefs keep it. That is one of the biggest hits I've ever seen in Madden. And on third down, the Chiefs pick it up and they are starting to roll. They haven't been able to get much going this game until now. Kadarius Tony for the massive touchdown for the Chiefs. That's exactly what they needed, putting them down by only three points now. Now we're into the end of the game. Just over two minutes left. Chiefs down three, no timeouts. They need a touchdown to win, field goal to tie. Second and five, Patrick Mahomes drops back. Justin Jefferson wide open on the corner route. This is exactly what the Chiefs needed. They're going to take a four point lead in the Super Bowl. The Chiefs are absolutely fired up. What a play. Justin Jefferson with Mahomes in real life would be a cheat code. And now the Cowboys have a chance to answer all three timeouts and two minutes to go. CD Lamb gets ripped on the first play. I'm just in shock the Cowboys even made it to the Super Bowl. Madden showing to be very unrealistic. But here they are. CD Lamb coming up with a massive catch on third down. And Dak's able to find Tyreek Hill to pick up the first down. They are driving. Dak has nothing available. Takes off. Picks up a seven yard gain. Second and short. This Chiefs defense is not able to stop the Cowboys at all right now. And Dak's just checking the ball down right here. 45 seconds to go in the game. Dak 
looking downfield, he hits his tight end for a massive gain to put the Cowboys in the red zone. Is this the money drive the Cowboys need? The Chiefs with a massive stop right here. What a play on the ball that could have been intercepted. On the next play, the Cowboys just handed off to Tony Pollard. Nine seconds left. Dak drops back, throws a pick to Mike Edwards. The Chiefs are going to win the whole thing. They are the last team standing. They just kneel it out. The Chiefs with Justin Jefferson, DJ Moore, Matt Judon, and more beat the Cowboys to take over the whole map. Absolutely wild ending. That's going to do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like and sub, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.